So what's wrong with this picture? Isn't this what's happening to Intel today? Is that that the the, the low end and eating into the into the bottom of the PC more market? Well, yes, uh, but the, the, the problem is not that this phenomenon is not. This has been in process for uh, more than 15 years, and for 15 years, uh, Intel has had at the top level uh, and and actually across the uh, top several hundred managers. Uh, this concept of disruptive technology and, and been looking for it and didn't see it. And so you have to ask yourself, what happened here? And there is a uh, phenomenon that cognitive scientists think about, uh, which has to do with the enormous seductive attraction of things that exist and our very great difficulty in seeing things that are completely outside of our horizon. So what was really happening in the... In the, uh, the uh, uh, in the in the uh, the risk processor world, uh, was that uh, uh, you know Arm Holdings over here? Uh, it didn't even look like an Intel. I mean, it was a licensor, a little licensor of intellectual property uh, that was licensing to uh, uh, people who, one way or another, could create chips. And at first, they were companies like LSI Logic that could uh, uh, could could essentially kind of cobble together a set of chips. Uh, to, to, to provide for a particular compute job. Uh, but eventually, you had uh, companies that were uh, independent foundries in TSMC in, in Taiwan, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor being the most important, uh, that were now able to manufacture chips uh, in, in significant volumes and in significant quality. And they slowly began to gain on Intel in terms of their capabilities. But again, they weren't really making chips aimed over here at the PC business, at least not any that were of a particular threat to Intel. So not much to worry about. And Intel felt it was greatly superior in manufacturing. Indeed, it was. Um, now, then you had the phenomena of, of mobile phones. Um, not a particularly good substitute for a PC, but over time, processors getting more and more powerful, and eventually you get smartphones, and um, uh, now you've got something that, that it, at first really wasn't succeeding very well because it wasn't clear how you got applications on it and uh, what you did with them, but uh, began to put in the market, uh, not the PC market, but in another market beyond the horizon of the Intels, uh, uh, something that could carry applications. Well, then you had the revolution of the uh, iTunes uh, uh, store where you could buy music and download it to a PC uh, over here, over in Intel's market, but also to a smartphone. And then you eventually had the whole app phenomena, uh, which which provided a way to distribute software in, in enormous variety uh, to a smartphone platform. And at this point, at this point, um, the uh, uh, the disruptive technology. Uh, begins to take effect because these apps are, in a Christensen sense, doing doing some jobs, okay, that PCs do, uh, like email. But interestingly, they're not just doing uh, one job; they're doing many, 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 many jobs. Uh, not only that, but this uh, this ecosystem over here, or this set of ecosystems, has now built up enormous scale and enormous capabilities, and and is now. Uh, uh, really an alternative reality to this, this PC world. And it's only then that it starts to be visible as a, quote, disruptor over here. And I think what a, what a cognitive psychologist would say is that the model of disruptive technology causes you to look uh, way too late and way too close to home for things that might do you in. And in fact, uh, the things that, that are going to do you in typically are not going to come that close to home. They're going to be uh, established in a, in, a, in a market beyond the horizon in their early vulnerable stages down here. Uh, they'll probably be intentionally uh, kept out of your view. Uh, you know, they don't want the competition at that point. And, and, and so quietly, 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 uh, this will begin to build up over here. And so... Um, uh, so it's really a tale of, of out beyond the fringes, out beyond the edges, 
of any given uh, business system, there is action. Uh, there is pain uh, that people want to, uh, you know, want to address with various solutions. And there, is, there are ideas. There is science. And there are solutions happening beyond the fringe. And so the important question here is not how do you deal with disruptive technologies, but how do you live beyond the fringe? And how do you do the pioneering work out beyond the fringe so that the myriad of things out beyond the fringe have you involved in them, understanding them, and eventually growing into them? And the, the beauty of the ARM ecosystem and the ARM connected community is that it has set up a systematic way to bring in a, a, a range of players um, outside of the fringe and continually convert the fringe into aspects of the overall business community, a very broad, a very rich, a very diverse, and continually growing business community.